Hi and welcome to Functional Justin episode 12. Um, last time I talked about Zio. Uh, the video before that I introduced Mono Transformers and showed how you can implement the writer Mono Transformer and what it's useful for. And uh, in this one what we're going to do is a similar thing. I'm going to implement the reader Mono Transformer and uh, show how we can take the expression evaluator from the very first video um, that used Scala 3 context functions how we can rewrite that program and instead of using context functions we're going to use the reader transformer and um, that might seem like a kind of academic exercise um, and it is it's a great way to learn about what the reader monad can be used for but the reader monad is actually the thing that underlies the Zio libraries um, R parameter so the way that you pass in a read-only environment to a Zio program uses the reader monad conceptually. Um, and um, so yeah, it's a good thing to learn about if you want to really understand how Zio works. So let's take a look at the code. Okay, so let's get started. So what we're going to do is start with one of the programs I've already written. So I'll put the links to the previous videos that you might want to watch just to catch up. Um, the program we're looking at is an expression evaluator. So it takes a, an abstract expression which looks like this. So it consists of arithmetic expressions. Um, we can also look up variables in a simple table and we have literal values. And, and then the actual program is just a simple pattern match that matches on an expression and returns a result. Now from the first video you'll know that the uh, return type is, is this funky um, context function. Um, which means what we're saying is that the expression is evaluated with this variable as an implicit parameter that we can just summon out of thin air whenever we need it. And that parameter is just a map of strings to values, right? So that's the symbol table. So conceptually what we have is a program that has this read-only environment that it can use when it's running and um, that's essentially what we're going to demonstrate today. So instead of using context functions, we're going to show how you can use the reader t monad transformer so from one of our, my other videos, I added error handling to this. So we're using um, the either type to handle errors. So if I was to run this program, you'll see that these two expressions give different results because this one has a missing symbol, which is an error. So when we run it, we'll see that the first expression is able to calculate correctly, gives us the result 74, and the other one fails with symbol not found. Right? So we used either to add error handling. So this is a program that's built using either as its effect type. And what we can do, because we're, we're going to create a reader um, monad transformer, is transform this program quite simply to use the reader to, to, so that we can get the symbol table from the environment using the reader instead of the context function. So in, in terms of practical use, um, why would you use this instead of a context function? Well, context functions don't exist in Scala 2, so that's one reason. Um, but the other reason is really just about learning how uh, the reader monad works and how the transformer works, right? So you can think of it as an academic exercise uh, above all. Okay, so how do we go about changing this program so that it's going to use the reader t monad? So I've already gone ahead and imported the uh, implementation of the either monad, which we're already using, and also the numeric type class that we did in one of the videos that represents an abstraction across numbers. So obviously the missing piece is the reader monad itself. So just like with the writer monad that we did a couple of videos ago, uh, we're going to need a new data type. So we're going to call it reader t. And the reader has three type parameters. So the first one is a higher kind of type f. And that represents the type of the monad that we're going to wrap. So in our case, that would be an either, but it could be anything. And then we have the type of the environment that we're going to read from. So in our case, it would be a symbol table but we're just going to use the parameter r for that. And then finally we have the result type of the, of the computation, because remember that this is ultimately just going to be an effect that yields a value. So reader t uh, consists of a run function, and the idea is that we can create our program using reader, reader t, and then when we're done we can run it and we can pass the environment as a parameter. And that means we can run the program multiple times with different parameters, and that's kind of one of the benefits of the, of the reader. So what does this function look like? Well, it takes an input of type R, which is the environment, and it produces an effect of type FA, which is our sort of inner monad. 
So that's the data type, and that's all we really need to do. So let's create a companion object. So remember in Scala, a companion object lets us write effectively static methods on things, and we would like to be able to write a static method to lift um, any, any monad into the reader t, just like we did with the writer monad. So we're going to write a lift function. And we need this because we're writing a program that lifts either's into reader t either's. So this is just a general pattern with monads that with uh, monad transformers that you need to be able to lift them. So the type parameters are going to mirror the ones in the data type. So we've got a, a monad type, we've got an environment, and we've got a value. And the parameter for lifting is, remember, a normal FA. So that's the monad that we're going to wrap. In our case, that's going to be an either. And the type of the return is going to be a reader T. And obviously, the type parameters we want are going to be the same, F, R, and A. What we want this to be is essentially we're going to construct an instance of the reader T data type. Uh, we want a function with wildcard argument that just returns the monad. So in other words, we can run this, and it will return the monad of type FA. So once you've got your data type, um, how do you use the reader T um, monad? Well, you need an instance of it. So remember, we have we implemented an instance of the either monad, which I've, which I've imported up there. Um, in our program, we're going to use uh, the reader monad. So what we'd like is an implicit instance of the reader monad, which contains all of the monadic operations so that we can go ahead and just use it in our code. So in Scala 3, we use the uh, given keyword, and we're going to call it the reader t monad. And the type parameters are going to be very similar to what we have above. So we have f, but this time we're going to constrain it to being of type monad. Uh, in other words, we only want to be able to use the monadic operators if the monad that we're wrapping, the f, is actually a monad. Then we need to define a parameter for the type r, which is our environment. So this is going to be um, using those type parameters. And we can go ahead and create the instance of the monad. So uh, sorry, this instead of f here, what we want is to use a type lambda. Um, so what we're saying is the first parameter, which is the monad, is actually going to be a reader t of type f r a 1. And that should give us enough for the type system to infer when we're trying to use a reader. So um, you'll probably need to watch the previous videos to really see what's going on here. But um, hopefully you can follow the implementation of the reader t even if you didn't see those. So the first thing a monad needs is the pure function. It takes a pure value of type A and returns a uh, instance of the monad. So in our case, we would like a reader T of type FRA. Um, so what is this going to do? Well, first of all, we know it's going to be a reader T. And we know that it has to have a run function. And we can use a wildcard argument again. And inside here, we need to use the the inner monad to to get the uh, to wrap the value a into an f of a, right? So to do that, we're going to summon that monad, and we can call pure on that. So in our case, what we would be looking at there is um, if this was an either, for example, we need to call pure on the either and then wrap that up in the reader. So if you remember from last video, or sorry, the two videos ago, um, it's, it's a very similar process of when you're implementing on a transformer, you have to use the inner monad implementation in the, in the transformer implementation. Um, so then we need flat map. So the signature of a flat map in Scala 3 is an extension method that takes the pure parameters A and B. And it's going to take a reader. Um, what we'd like to do is to be able to extend any reader effect that we come across, any reader t, with the flat map method. And that will give us the full power of being a monad. So what is the signature of flat map? Um, it takes a function that takes a pure value a, and it returns a value of the monad. So it's going to be a reader t of type f 
R, and remember that the flat map can change the result type. So we have a B here, not an A. So let's implement this step by step. So obviously the return type is going to be a reader T again, and we would like um, we would like a function argument coming into reader T, and that function argument we can specify this time as being type R. The next thing we would like to do is calculate FA, right? So we have an FAR here, we would like to get an FA. So where do we get an FA from? Well, we can get it by running the reader that we got in. So if we run this, it gives us a FA. And if you, you can see that from the signature here, that running takes an environment and gives us an FA. So where do we get the environment from? Well, we have it here already. So we're making a function. So we already have the uh, R. So we can go ahead and say, if we take our reader, we can run it with the parameter. And that gives us an FA. Um, then we would like to get an FB, because we want to wrap. That's what we actually want to return with this new function. So to get that, we can take our FA and flat map it. So now we're using the internal flat map. In our case, the internal monad is an either, right? So this would be a flat map over an either. That gives us a B. Now we can run the function. And running the function that we passed in will give us a reader T F R B. And um, then we need to run that with the environment, which gives us an F B. Um, and then finally, that is what we need to return. Looks like we fell victim to too many brackets there, so that bracket should be there. Okay, so let's move on. So the next thing um, we're going to do is convert this program to use our new data type. So we've created the, the monad definition itself. So now we need to just import a couple of things so that everything is available to our code here. So we're going to import the expression types and we're going to import the um, this whole module, this whole object, because we want all of the definitions that we created. And uh, the next thing we want to do is change the return type that's used throughout the, the program. Um, so currently the return type is just an either. So we want to change this to be a reader T. And um, we're going to use a type lambda here, just so that the types line up. Because remember that the first parameter of um, a reader t is uh, a monad. So our monad is going to be the either. Um, then we need the environment type, which is going to be env of type a. And then we need the result type, which is of type a. So now we need to make some modifications to the code to make it work. So uh, let's see what we got. Uh, we got some errors. Um, this is because we need to change this return type. So with env is also going to be, um, we're going to change it to be, we don't need the context function anymore. So this is going to be a reader t. Uh, once again, we need the type lambda, we need to say that this is an either of a val error and type a1. And um, again, we need the env type a and the a. All right, so you can see that most things are compiling there. I've got a couple of red errors to look at. Um, so is zero is uh, a little bit tricky. So is zero is part of the numeric type class. And what we need to be able to do is just looking at the reader, we want to know if the numeric value is zero. Now, when this was an either, we could just look inside the either. But now it's a reader, we really need to evaluate the reader too. But at this point, we don't have an environment. Now, luckily, we don't need the environment here. So what we're going to do is just use an empty environment. So we can say, um, we can say that we can take the reader and then we can run and we can give it an empty uh, symbol table, which is just a map of string or a map of a rather. Um, and that solves that one. So the other thing we need to change 
is uh, here we're returning an either. We want to return a reader. So we can simply use the lift function that we wrote to lift this into the right monad. Um, the other thing that's going to change, obviously, is the actual simple table lookup function. So when we're when we're evaluating a var with the handle var function, what we used to do was summon the thing from the environment. Well, we can't do that now. So instead, what we've got to do is um, return a new reader t, and um, this is going to be a function that takes the environment. So this would be env. And um, then we can just use that environment that's passed in when the program actually executes to get the actual um, value from the symbol table. Now let's make sure I get the brackets right. Okay, so that's good. And here we have one more thing that needs to be lifted, this error. So we just lift that into the reader t. Uh, and that's pretty much all we need to change. Now there's one more thing we need to change. Uh, if I was to run this, you'll probably see what the problem is. So what we got back here, what we used to get was the was the um, was the either, right? So we can print it out and we can see what the result is. Uh, but what we're getting now is we're getting a reader t, um, and we can't print that and get anything anything useful out of it. Um, we didn't actually run the program at all yet. So what we need to do is we can change the symbol table that we pass in. Our former program needed it to be in the context uh, in because it was a context function. Um, so that's why we provided it using the given keyword. Well, now we can just use a, a normal variable in both of these instances. And um, then what we're going to do is actually run our program and pass in the environment. So remember, that there's a slight difference in, in, in building programs with effects and building programs with context functions. We build a program with an effect, and then we can execute it. Uh, in the case of a reader program, we execute it by using run, and we pass in the environment. So now when we run it, you can see that we're back to where we were. So um, just a quick summary of what we did. We uh, implemented the reader t. Um, it consists of a simple data type. Um, we've, we need a lift function to lift regular monads into the reader t, and then an instance of the actual monad itself. Now, if you wanted to change this to Scala2, there wouldn't be much to do really, you just um, the Scala2 type class format is a little bit different, uh, but you could definitely do it, and it wouldn't be much more, uh, it wouldn't be actually very different to what we've got here. So that's it, that's reader t. And uh, as I mentioned before, reader t is a fundamental part of the way that Zio works. And um, even though Zio uses something called effect rotation, which we'll probably get into in a later video, the concept is basically the same. Um, you can take a program that's built from IOs and you can wrap them in a reader T to provide uh, dependency injection. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, give me a thumbs up, tell your friends to watch the video. Thanks a lot, bye now.